All right, YouTube. So today we were here with my trailer I picked up. I've had this thing for a couple years. Uh, <clears throat> it's there behind me. And uh, had a question by, I'm actually leasing this trailer out to one of my lease operators now for the season because things have kind of changed in my business aspect of stuff, doing a lot more power only and taking some time off work to get some projects going. But uh, anyways, had some questions about how to pick out a good reefer trailer because my last reefer trailer was all right, but I had a lot of issues that weren't worth fixing. So this trailer here I bought about a year or two ago, maybe something like that, yeah. And uh, it's been very good. Uh, things to look for, since I've been hauling reefer for a couple of years now, this is definitely a video that will be very helpful for a lot of you. But uh, it's a 53 foot 102 wall bash is what it is. And the uh, biggest thing is, you know, you look at these things Number one thing you want to do, what I like to get, stainless rear panel. So this is the rear panel. The bumper is not part of the rear panel. It is uh, unboltable. It's repaired, you know, just bolted off. I need to get a new one. As you can see, it looks horrible. But if this was uh, not stainless, then this stuff rots out from the, behind the lights. It all rots out and it gets, it's just hectic on your wiring. Um, and then when you get the stainless rear, you also get the stainless uppers right here, uh, which is really nice. So it makes it really handy. Let's see if we can. Get this thing open here. But biggest thing you want to do is look for your door seals. Uh, this has got double seals. Some of them have triple seals. Super, the Great Dane Super Seal. That's what that means. They have triple seals. Uh, you want to look around all your doors, you know, make sure there's no uh, rips and tears there. Because when you back up to the dock, you know, you have these doors open. <clears throat> you know, they, they open up. You know, and you latch it with the... With that. And as you can see here, here's a tip for you. If you if you got to have that thing closed and latched in is what you really want. That way it don't rub against your truck or your trailer when you're going around the parking lot. We have this thing open when you're backing into a dock. You know, this area here, sometimes they have dock protectors and they'll get bumped up here and tore up. And so main thing is open the doors all the way, look at your seals all the way up. Um, now the height, there's different height trailers, you know, top to bottom, different height trailers there. Uh, and this one's called, it's like a super capacity. And so you have, a, you have more height. It's like, I think six inches more, four or six inches more height which is pretty good. Uh, let's hop up in here. Of course, you got the duct floor for air going uh, back to the unit. I put E-Track in it. Cost me about $300 for the supplies. Riveted in, full length of the trailer. That's very handful, helpful because you got, uh, some companies won't load you. I've had some loads turned down before I put that in because you got the little bars that press against it and it, it's not really a securement. Uh, this trailer here is equipped with the uh, dual chutes. So you got these chutes on the side, which is nice. Like I said, if you're hauling a high cube load, you get more room up top. Walk up here to the front. Show you how that system comes together. Need to, need to tighten that up a little bit when I get some chance, but um, that's how that unit looks. You want to inspect this area here. This is where your unit's at on the other side of this. And this is your uh, bulkhead. And of course the pallets beat the crap out of this thing when I slide in and out. The biggest thing I want to look for too is in these corners. My trailer wasn't like this when I got it. It kind of has developed the corner issues where you put pallets in and the guy pushes it forward and you know, they crimp the corners. And to keep in mind here is your wires, the wires for your upper lights outside, your clearance lights run inside pipes in here. And so when somebody crimps like that, they're damaging those wires, which I had rewired outside of mine because of this. <clears throat> Basically, in your floor is, if you have any holes or anything like that, you wanna make sure you get them welded up quick because underneath these, this is the 05, underneath some of these older trailers, it's all wood. Uh, newer trailers use composite backing underneath the floor so they don't rot out. But that's just one of those tips to remember. I think it was about 2012 is when they started going to some of the composite floors. But you just want to get down and look at the floor, make sure it's not, don't have no dips or bows. 
Uh, biggest deal back here is these plates here around this area likes to crack. So you want to look at those areas really good. And you look at the side of this thing, we got the aluminum wheels. It came with steel wheels. I put aluminums on it because it saved me a bunch of weight. I got aluminum inner and outers because when you deal with the reefer, a lot of this stuff is, you know, I like to haul drive and loads in this thing too when I get a chance if it pays the same money. And so, of course, that's one of the better options is to be able to handle that weight, the extra weight, by not hauling around steel wheels. Plus, it looks a lot better. But um, another option you got in these reefer trailers is up underneath here. Let's see. Yeah, so this is an aluminum beam, and this is a steel beam. And all trailers will have the steel beam for your carriage, but not all trailers will have the aluminum beams. So part of this trailer up to the landing gear is aluminum beamed. And what that means is you can haul more weight. You know, obviously that's a, a big benefit. Uh, it does go back to steel up this way. Uh, let's see, this one's aluminum. And from here up is all steel because uh, where the fifth wheel plate and everything goes up that way. So keep that in mind when you're looking for one because some of these cheaper trailers will be all steel, they'll be heavy. I prefer Thermal Kings uh, for one reason, is they're quiet and I've had very good luck getting parts for them. When something goes wrong, you don't want to be uh, lack of parts. You know, you don't want to have to wait for stuff. You ain't got time to wait for stuff. You want to have a service that's 24 seven and within a hundred miles. So far, everything I've had to have done to this thing has been within that distance. We add the light onto it. This one does have the EV, EVT system. And what that does is it controls the, as a valve now it controls the Freon. And when it needs, you can have the, the, the compressor working less with higher pressure is what that does. So you use less fuel and it has a faster uh, cool down time. So when you're getting loaded, you fire this thing up and it, on the screen here, you can go to the display and it'll say like 800, per, 800 or whatever. And that's like maxed out the valve, which means it's your fast idle through all the, all the Freon can flow through it. But that valve will change and you know, that way it can fire up when it's maintaining, it can fire up and have uh, low RPM idle with the same amount of Freon going through it. So you can get a nice cool effect in the trailer without having all the uh, fuel usage. So this one's not a, not a whisper unit. It's just a normal SB210 unit. And uh, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward unit. Uh, this one has had the compressor replaced from the previous owners for one reason why I bought it, uh, which is great. These compressors last, you know, between 12,000 and 20,000 hours. Uh, this unit here, as you can see, has got about 13,000 hours on it. Um, <clears throat> I don't use it much. That's why the old jam, you know, that filter says 14. It's about when I bought it. Difference with a whisper unit and a normal unit is these doors are hollow on a normal unit and on a whisper, they'll be thick, full of foam. That's your biggest difference on that. Um, along with the upper panel up there, it'll be the same way. Uh, this is an old Martin trailer. That's why it's got the Carolina blue <laughs> fins on there. I didn't paint them that way. It came that way. And you, maybe you can see the check mark here. But, um, you know, biggest thing looking at the trailers, that's, those are your biggest options right there. Um, <clears throat> you know, the typical stuff you want to look for, of course, is cracks and brake wear and everything that goes along with equipment. Um, another thing you want to look for is, you know, your slide here. Make sure this is a this is a mechanical slide. So it is not the air slide. Air slide would have a valve right here. You pull it and it does all the magic in the truck. This one's mechanical. You just pull this lever here. Pulls these pins. Let's see if I can get a view of these pins for you. And of course, these are the pins they move in. They move in when you move them and you can slide that thing back and forth. But um, that's pretty much a walk around of this newer trailer I picked up. Uh, it's been really good. I mean, I haven't had many issues at all. Haven't been turned down by any carriers. Some carriers, keep in mind when you add the, when you add the E-Track to the side, some shippers will not want you to haul certain things as far as like if you're hauling cotton for medical use, mostly medical and food products. If you're hauling stuff that's 
uh, ingredients for something where you could have potential contamination inside those e-tracks. They won't let you haul stuff. Uh, this is things we've kind of learned by doing this. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. As far as I know, is tips and tricks for, for buying a reefer trailer. If you guys like the video, hit the subscribe button below. Always, uh, you know, make some comments on there if you want to see something else. I know there's a lot of people watching this channel for the trucking information, for car information, for welding. I don't know. Whatever. I'm, I'm always doing something different. But uh, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.